Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. You're gonna have a great show today. We're gonna talk about pink eye. We're gonna talk about how cattle get it, how it manifests in the eye, uh, how to treat it, how to control it. We have Dr. Brent Meyer here with us today. It's gonna be a great show, stay tuned. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of ResFlor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at ResFlorGold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm here in Newell, Iowa. Yep. yep Big metropolis here <laughs> with Dr. Brent Meyer. And uh, uh, it's great to get out and it's great to have Dr. Meyer on the show. He's a national expert in beef cattle medicine. He's a veterinarian. He did his graduate work at Iowa State, been in practice for many, many years, and and now has amplified that that practice experience to help other veterinarians through technical services through Merck Animal Health. And yep. Just a great resource up here in Northwest Iowa. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate having me on today and looking forward to talking some pink eye. You bet. So we're going to talk about pink eye, which, yeah. you know, maybe is one of the most common things yeah. that respiratory disease, pink eye. Yeah. And we just still trying to get our hands around it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the cost of the beef industry, it's about $150 million a year. Easy uh, to the industry on, on the losses, especially on performance loss. You know, you're looking at, you know, 35, 45 pounds of weaning weight on these calves if they have pink eye, not to mention the deduction in sale, uh, you know, if they have bad eyes going to the market. So it's a huge cost. When we think about pink eye, there's really five major organisms that cause pink eye. Uh, there's Morexella bovis, there's Morexella bovoculi, Mycoplasma bovis, there's actually IBR, and then also coronavirus can cause some lesions okay. as well. And so I think today, I think we want to focus on the bacteria yep. is kind of what we want to focus on because we have vaccines for those. Uh, so the thing with pink eye, how it starts is you got to have damage to the cornea. Uh, normal healthy eye, uh, there's bacteria there anyway. Uh, once that cornea gets damaged and that collagen is exposed, uh, then we start getting the, the devastating effects of pink eye. And Morex bovis, if you look at it, uh, has a pili on the bacteria, and those pili like to attach to the, the cornea hole or the abrasion that sticks to the collagen, okay. and then it starts growing. Um, so usually Morexella bovis is the one that starts things. Morexella bovoculi, that one does not have pili, it has spicules, but that likes to attach to the bovis organisms itself and it forms this net. And so a lot of times when we send in samples, we get Morexella bovis and bovoculi in the pink eye lesion. Because they're working together. Yeah. One has to start. And, yep. You know, it's, not, it's no different than any other disease. You get that abrasion like a foot rod or yep. anything that... that that stops that innate or disrupts that innate immunity, mm -hmm. here we go. Absolutely. And, and that's why, uh, you know, it's important if you do have problems to, to get those eyes cultured. Uh, a lot of times, uh, like I said, the bo bovoculi will overgrow bovis, but usually uh, the bovis is there. Uh, and that's where the vaccines that we have play an important role. There's a lot of more Xella bovis vaccines on the market. Yep. Uh, we are seeing some more, more Xella bovoculi coming on. But I think what producers need to know about these vaccines is that the, the time you got to give that vaccine before pink eye season is very important. You got to give at least 45 to 60 days prior to peak fly season, get those vaccines in to get a good strong immunity. We've seen herds that will vaccinate those calves in June or already in fly season. Yeah. We're way behind on getting antibodies in the lacrimal gland. So it's really important to, to, to work with your veterinarian and get that timing out there farther than, than what we think. Yeah, we put the... We put the, the fly tag on too soon yep. and we put the vaccine in too late yep. and it's a bad combination of the, the two in trying to control yep. it. But, uh, and that's not a, a real strong place to get an immune response. No, that's, that's the struggle. You know, we, we want to get antibody there, uh, but you said it's hard to do. 
but if you follow the directions uh, in the booster intervals, we can get some benefit from that. Uh, the industry's got to work hard to get some maybe better vaccines on the road, which we're all working on. But yep. that's, yeah, the key is, is timing of that vaccine. Perfect. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll do more with Dr. Brent Meyer. We're going to talk about some of the treatments for pink eye. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. Hey, folks, welcome to Cattle Intel by Neogen. We're going to talk about some different ways in which cattle can transmit diseases. One of them is nose to nose contact or through mucous membranes from sneezing, snorting, coughing, urinating, defecating, many different types. Another one that we can do is bloodborne pathogens by not cleaning equipment between uses. So make sure that when we have things like anaplasmosis that we're changing needles, using a new needle each time. Lastly, it's our premise, making sure that we keep our places, we rest them between groups, that we disinfect our equipment, disinfect our, our chutes and things between animals. But animals can transmit diseases directly through practices that we do and through using processing equipment one after the other. This has been the Cattle Intel by Neogen. Are you a cattle feeder looking to manage for a stronger and more profitable set of cattle? Look no further than Igenity Feeder. Igenity Feeder utilizes DNA to gain insight into your cattle's genomic potential. With the information to predict performance, quality, and economic endpoints for cattle feeders. Animals are scored and ranked in a simple format, driving more precise and accurate management decisions. Igenity Feeder gives you the power to predict days on feed, manage variability within lots, characterize carcass performance, and focus on metrics important to you and your operation. With the data provided, you will identify superior animals earlier and maintain high operational efficiency. Maximize your profit and optimize performance with Igenity Feeder. Ranchers, looking to elevate your pasture management game? Turn to Heinen Brothers for expert aerial application. With state-of-the-art equipment and seasoned pilots, we deliver precision treatments right to your fields. From fertilizers to herbicides, Heinen Brothers has your pasture covered. Visit HeinenBrosAg.com to learn more. They're here. They're hungry and they can't be stopped with ivermectin. Choose Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With Safeguard's efficacy, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brent Meyer. Dr. Meyer is a veterinarian, tech service veterinarian for Merck Animal Health, um, but practiced up here in North, you practice up here quite a bit in Northwest yeah. Iowa. Yeah, about uh, 15 years, <laughs> yeah, 15 years worth. So seen a lot of different pink eye cases, seen a lot of things with respiratory disease, uh, just one of those sources of information that helps all of us with our practices. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, pink eye treatment. Yeah. Yeah, obviously treatment, whether it's BRD, pink eye, foot rod, is getting on top of it quick. Yep. You know, we don't want to wait until the, the eye is ulcerated and squinting and stuff. So timing of, of treatment is very important. Uh, you know, as veterinarians, there's two classes of antimicrobials that are labeled for pink eye. Uh, one is tetracyclines, the other one's tulithromycin. Uh, there's many options out there for that uh, brand. So, but there's also drugs that can be used in an extra label manner, uh, you know, so work with your veterinarian to, if you want to use something else than those, those products and just use them as labeled dose. A lot of producers like to inject, uh, you know, around the eye or in the subconjunctiva space, uh, you know, with uh, beta lactime or penicillin type products, extra label, but there is anecdotal evidence that it works pretty good. Uh, to get the antibiotic in that area. So the other thing is uh, we want to kind of keep the, the sunlight off of that eye, uh, yeah. you know, and that helps heal it. And so there's ways of doing that is, as you know, patching that eye. Uh, I mean, we had the old guys would put, you know, denim blue jeans and oh, yeah. patch it on the eye. The other one is uh, sewing the third eyelid up in those calves to and suturing that shut and then that suture will wear off and then they'll be healed up by then. So there's some options there to cover that eye up. Yeah, and, and I think it's important to stress that, you know, we'll sit there and go, well, you know, I, I talk to people that say, well, if I can see that calf start, eyes starting to water, 
a week later, I've got pink eye. Yeah. And, and you get into some of these Hereford breeders, you know, I'm not picking on any breed, don't get me wrong, but they're very sensitive to that. And they're trying to get more pigment bred around yeah. the eye um, and, and select for that. But they're so good at picking that up early and getting those calves treated and that's the difference between success and them going blind. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the, the watering is, is probably one of the first things you see is a you know, wet face, especially on those white face breeds, you'll see a lot sooner. Uh, once they start squinting a little bit, you know, you better get on board pretty yep. quick. Uh, and it takes labor to get them in and, and assess it and, and get those injected with the correct antibiotic to get a, a good treatment response because it can spread. You know, with the flies, we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, it feeds on the, the, the tears, it feeds on the, the nasal secretions because it's all connected and they go calf to calf and it can affect 80, up to 80% of the calf crop if we don't get on top of it uh, quickly. So, and sometimes you got to, you know, mass treat the herd too if it's really starting to blow up. Um, so yeah, that's definitely got to watch. So situations. Um, with some of the things, uh, you know, nowadays, the, the use of, of extra label in the feed is not allowed. Correct. So, yeah. So that's a so that's a tough one. You know, you got to work with a veterinarian. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think there's a VFD for pink eye treatment yeah. at this point. So you're left with the injectables. Uh, you know, so and then separate those calves if you can. And in the pasture situation, it's tough. Uh, you know, versus a feedlot, you can remove them and get them to a shady area. But uh, if we can remove some of those disease pressure in the herd, that helps. You know, there are the rest of the calves too out there. So um, there's some things that we, and there's also some sprays that you can use uh, as well that's been coming on board the last couple of years, uh, pump sprays that, that are labeled for pink eye. Uh, so there's some other options that we have in our toolbox to, to get on top of it. But th the key is, is get on top of it quickly. Yep. Well, great information. We've talked about what pink eye is. We've talked about the treatment. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk about a couple of segments here to talk about how you can prevent pink eye in your herd with Dr. Brent Meyer. You're watching Doc Talk. We'll be right back. Every farmer knows that understanding the landscape is the most important ingredient for success. When it comes to investing in precious metals, United Patriot Coin can help steer you in the right direction. No obligation, just solid advice. Call now for your free guide, 844-202-7834. Hey, I'm Clark Victory. I grew up right here on this little ranch near Chelsea, Oklahoma. Roped and ranched all my life. A few years ago, I had an injury that created a what they call a frozen shoulder. And after speaking with the surgeon in Tulsa, he told me that he could make my shoulder better if he did surgery, but he absolutely couldn't fix it. And I called Kansas Regenerative Medical Center. I did the stem cell replacement. By 12.30, my wife and I had had lunch and was driving back to Chelsea. We work around here. Some days we work pretty hard around here. And my right shoulder doesn't get sore, it's, it's like a baby's arm. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver, you rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. In the livestock industry, castration is a common practice to ensure proper herd management. All methods are painful, regardless of the age of the animal. At Solvit, we could not ignore the clear industry need for better castration solutions. So we developed Lidoband, a novel lidocaine impregnated elastrator, addressing the pain associated with band castration. It provides local anesthesia throughout the castration process. Lidoband, a small device that can make a big difference. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brent Meyer, and we're up in Newell, Iowa, uh, where Dr. Meyer serves as a tech services vet for Merck Animal Health. He's practiced up here in Northwest Iowa, seen many, many cases of uh, everything to do with bovine, and has been a friend and a colleague, and and uh, great to get up here and see your where you live and yep. hometown and yeah, and, big town of Newell, <laughs> big town of Newell. Yeah. But uh, when we talk about pink eye. Um, prevention's the key, right? Correct. 
Yeah, we talked about vaccinations. Yep. Uh, you know, so we'll now we'll talk about vectors. Uh, we call you know the, the flies. We call direct vectors and indirect vectors. The direct vectors is face to face, nose to nose. You know, that you can shed and spread that that way. And then the indirect would be the flies. Uh, they feed from one calf. You know, the secretions, and they go to another calf, and they move it around that way. So controlling the face flies is going to be paramount for for pink eye control. And there's products out there. We all know there's there's fly tags. Uh, you know, whether it's organophosphate or pyrethrins, there's also really good combo fly tags out yeah. there. The key with fly tags is that they last about four to five months. So we go back to timing of vaccination. We don't want to put those fly tags in too soon because then by the time fly season hits, they kind of lost their their punch. And so uh, timing is important with those fly tags. Just follow label directions. A lot of time calves get one, cows get two. Uh, but yeah, cows varies. get two. Yep. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Very Everybody important. That's a corner on yep. on one on the cows, yeah. and then wonder why why we have problems. Yeah, correct. And so that's that's the thing is that face fly is a big one. Yeah. Uh, there are uh, porons that we can directly apply to the cow, calf, whatever, but watch the labels closely because a lot of porons just have horn fly control, which all the horn flies are the ones you see on the back and on the legs. Uh, and, and, there, and there's some that have horn fly and face fly control. So pick the ones that have the face fly control. Uh, they work a little bit better and they can last anywhere from six to eight weeks, depends on how much rain and precipitation you get. Uh, so a lot of people, you know, repour or use um, back oilers rubbers, uh, that sort of thing, or four-wheeler with, uh, you know, garden sprayers in the back and to, to kind of miss the cows and calves if they need to. So you might need to apply those pour-ons more often than not, sometimes and it depends on the season. I always tell people that when the cows are out on the pasture, we got to send the fly control with them. Yep. And when they're in the feedlot, we can work on the you know yeah. the pins and different yeah. things like that correct so. yeah absolutely so. the other thing is uh you know there's feed through igrs and, and you know growth regulators that you can feed uh making sure you have a healthy dung beetle population in the pasture uh one thing i want to mention though is the effect of internal parasite load on these calves uh, we've seen uh, huge pink eye outbreaks and we would do fecals on these calves and they're loaded with nematodirus uh, situations or cuparia out there. And we know that if they, if they have a large uh, parasite, internal parasite burden, their immune systems kind of shift focus to that and they don't really focus on infectious disease like pink eye in the eye or vaccine response. And so we don't want to rule out uh, taking care of strategic deworming on those cows and calves because if we can get those parasites out of the situation, their immune system is going to be stronger. They also can fight natural pink eye infection a lot easier because they're not dealing with the parasite burden. Well, not only does it suppress the immune system, but I think you said something key to it. It kicks it to a different type of immune response rather than an IgG response. We start to yep. get some of those IgE yep. responses and, and the immune system can't, can't fight off everything. That's correct. Yes, it's, it's, pink eye is a multifactorial attack. Uh, yep. You know, vaccines, fly control, internal parasite control. Uh, then we'll be talking, I think, next on uh, environmental. environmental control. You know, what yeah. can we do in the environment to help these guys out? So. Yeah, well, you can see why we got him on the show. Wealth of knowledge, great information. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about environmental control in pink eye with Dr. Brent Meyer. The cost of an open cow these days very expensive. It's hard at times to dedicate a half a day or a whole day to leave your practice to go palpate cows. And so Alertus Test has helped speed the process up of getting preg rates back to the owners. And so free up time for diagnostics or working in your clinic, it also will help generate revenue, not being on site to do the testing. Hey folks, for your firearm and ammo needs, for gun safes and much, much more, and to have it personalized, come visit us at United Patriot Supply outside of Seneca, Kansas. You can also visit us online at unitedpatriotsupply.com. Be sure to say that Dr. Dan and Doc Talk sent you, and we'll see you down the road. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple. You fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. 
When it comes to treating BRD, you want a product that you can count on to get the job done at an affordable price. Macrosyn by Bimeda delivers on both. A straight shooting, no BS to lathromycin that does what it's supposed to do. End of story. You don't need to take our word for it though. Go to macrosyn.com for customer testimonials and head-to-head -head trial results. For your cattle and your bottom line, choose Macrosyn. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Brent Meyer. We're here in Newell, Iowa, where Dr. Meyer serves as technical services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health. And uh, we're talking pink eye. And environmental factors can can play a role in this as well. Absolutely, yeah. You gotta think about that too. Uh, you know, you think about UV light, bright sun, uh, sunny days, dust, pollen, uh, weed seeds, uh, just old mature grass uh, is another one. Uh, anything that, that can damage the cornea, like we talked about earlier, you gotta have a damage to that cornea for that pink eye to set in. So one thing we see in the Midwest, I mean down south too, is that when we get into that late June, July, where we see a lot of pink eye popping up, uh, there's, there's mature grasses that are tall, kind of stemmy, and then we get some rain and we get some nice lush green growth. Uh, those calves, they go right through that to get to the green growth. And when they're going through there, they're scratching their eyes on that tall stuff. So one thing you can do is, is clip the pastures. I yeah. know it's another step as management goes, but if you do have that out there, just take a mower and mow that, that rough stuff down. Uh, that way we remove that, that trauma aspect of it. Uh, providing shade is very important. Uh, like I said, the UV light, we get that out of the way. On the pasture, you need to worry about dust too much. Uh, you know, it's more of a feedlot thing. Yeah. But the other thing is, you know, fly control. If you if you have them in a dry lot situation with pasture, remove the manure and the wetness around there. Remove that breeding ground for the flies. It's another management technique that we can su suppress that fly bird and the, and the damage to to the the eye. Well, and I, I think to your point, you know, we'll say, well, we had them over at this place, and we moved, changed pastures because they ate this pasture down. And we and I've seen them turn calves out, and when they hit that taller grass and the pollen clouds. And you're like, oh my, yeah. we're gonna have issues. Absolutely. And 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 then we act surprised when we have pink eye. But it's just some common sense that if mm -hmm. you're taking them off of something that's short and you're turning them into another pasture that has yeah. that tall, stemmy stuff, um, yeah. we're gonna have some issues. It's like if you want broccoli or a Big Mac, you're gonna go for the Big Mac. Yep. It's like the, the calves want that grass. You know, that's what they're gonna go after. So that's an issue. Another thing we looked at, and people don't think about it, is that the tail switch of cows. Uh, I just want to mention that is. When it's hot and the flies are pressure might be high, they kind of bunch up, okay? And where are the huh. calves at? They're right next to the cow. They're bunching yeah. up against the cow and that cow's whipping their tail over the place. And, that, and they're and nursing. Tail. Yeah, they're nursing. And that tail is like a pretty sharp, you know, like almost like a whip. And we've seen a lot of, you know, damage to calf eyes when those cows are flipping those tails around. So one thing you can do is, is just, you know, trim that twitch off a little bit with the scissors, just cut that down so many more of a blunt end. Uh, that helps also reduce that trauma because we also see that too in the summer where uh, if you look at them, they're just bunched up and there's a lot of, could be some damage going on those calf eyes at that time. I thought you just trimmed to make them look younger. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there's that too, I guess. But yeah, so that's something you do and, and uh, you know, you can buy, if you don't have shade, you can buy some or make some portable shades uh, just to get away from that sun because them flies love to feed when it's sunny out. And if they're in the shade, they're not as aggressive on those, on those eyes and, and, the, and the tear ducts and stuff. Well, uh, great information. What are, your, what are your bullet points then for someone on pink eye? Yeah, bullet points, uh, vaccinate. You know, vaccinate soon enough to get a good immune response. Don't wait too late. Uh, the, the back to your, your fly tags, you know, plan that so they're really potent when peak season starts. Reduce the damage to the cornea, whether it's the vector issue, uh, the management of the pastures, uh, those are huge parts that we want to deal with and, and pay attention to. Cool. Well, we appreciate you being on the show. Uh, as always, just great information, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot of positive mes messages coming back in because you just helped a bunch of people. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what we do at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brent Meyer and we'll see you down the road.
At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights-driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. Founded by farmers, for farmers, United Patriot Coin stands with you. Diversify your financial portfolio with precious metals, a smart investment for uncertain times. You've worked too hard not to protect your assets. United Patriot Coin, precious metals for a secure future. Hey folks, for your firearm and ammo needs, for gun safes and much, much more, and to have it personalized, come visit us at United Patriot Supply outside of Seneca, Kansas. You can also visit us online at unitedpatriotsupply.com. Be sure to say that Dr. Dan and Doc Talk sent you, and we'll see you down the road.